In the prior problem, we solved just one differential equation, and that was a uh, Euler's method. We used that to investigate how we change step size to get different accuracy of our differential equation. For this next problem, problem number two, we're going to solve four differential equations uh, together. These are going to be uh, four coupled differential equations, and we'll use Euler's method and also ODEint to do that. Follow along with this problem. At the from the course website and in this case it's going to be under schedule and this will be homework problem number five um, you know pro uh, sorry homework five problem number two and you can just get that from this collab link there and we also solve it with Excel okay so we're gonna uh, perform this uh, chemical reaction a plus B goes to C and then also B plus C goes to D and we have the product that's desired. That's going to be our C product. That's the one that we want. And we have uh, some of this undesirable product D. So we want to also calculate the selectivity of how much C we produce versus the D. And we're going to be able to track this with this set of differential equations that's from a reaction network from species balances. And we have uh, and solve this as a, as a function of time with a time change of 0.2 seconds all the way up to a final time of 3. So let's go ahead and just put in a couple of our values here um, K1 and K2 okay and then uh, we're going to also include our final time of 3 and our delta T of 0.2 alright let's go ahead and come up with our times that we need I'm going to use the np.a range and we're going to go between 0 and final time. I'm going to add just a little bit there so it gets the final time point as well. And then we'll have a delta t. I'll need to import numpy as np and then we'll also need matplotlib in here as well. Um, for the Jupyter Notebook I need to do matplotlib inline. In Colab you don't need that line right there. But then I'll do import matplotlib uh, matplotlib.pyplot as as plt. Okay, we're going to need to plot it as well. Okay, so we have our time here. Let's go ahead and just uh, print out some things as we go, just to look and see what our time is. Okay, so there's our A range, and we went from a 0.2 uh, second interval, so you can see the different times that are printed there. Okay, let's come up with our length of how many time points we have. I'm just going to do LENT. And then um, let's go ahead and create our storage for the CA values, CB values, and so on. So I'm going to have ones that are going to be of length N. So the initial concentration of A is going to be equal to 1. B is going to be equal to 1 as well, and then C and D will be equal to 0. So I can just copy this, and those are going to be, um, these are going to be 1s for CA and CB, and then we'll have some zeros for C, C and CD. Okay, zeros. So I'm just setting up a storage array for those, it's um, you know just making those spaces available. I'm just going to initialize them to ones or zeros initially throughout the whole thing. If I print C A O oh, C A for example, I'm going to see that's just full of ones, and then if I do C C, you can see that's just full of zeros. So we're going to fill in the rest of these right here with new values using Euler's method. So uh, to do that, we need going to need to loop through for i in range and we're going to start with 1 and go all the way up to n this is another example of how we use a loop and then when we indent in that loop those are all the commands that are going to be used uh, they're going to be run inside that loop so if I just said uh, ca equals 2 for example in that loop and then I printed uh, ca then I would see it's equal to 1 initially, and then beyond that, it's going to be equal to 2. But it's not going to be equal to 2. We're going to update that with our Euler's method. 
Okay, so that's going to be minus K1 times CA uh, from the prior one. Okay, so that's I minus 1. So the very first time through, it's going to try to calculate this value, and it's going to use the prior value, the I minus 1 value. And then I'm going to also use the CB I minus 1. And um, close that parenthesis, and then multiply it by DT and then add CAI minus 1. So that's the very first one right there, but we need to copy this for the other ones as well. We'll do CB, CC, and CD. And likewise, we'll just add in the prior values. And then what changes now is going to be what um, is right here. And that's going to be from our uh, kinetics, or uh, sorry, our kinetic reactions here. We have, um, you know, this very first one was the K1 times concentration of A times concentration of B. Now the next one, we're going to add in this extra term right here in the uh, minus area. Okay, so that's going to be minus K2 times uh, CAI minus 1, or I guess this would be CB. Okay, and then times CC I minus 1. All right, so let's do it for the other ones as well. And uh, it's going to be very similar to this one. Okay, but then we just have a positive sign there because we're going to be producing uh, CC with that. So it's going to give it a positive sign. And then we also have uh, this same term right here. Uh, because it's going to be consuming C as that second reaction occurs. And then the very final one, we just have it's this term right here. Okay, and I could simplify this a little bit, this whole thing, if I just said reaction 1 equals this one, and then reaction 2 equals the second one, Okay, because I really only have two reaction rates in here. And then if I just did minus uh, reaction 1, minus reaction 1, and uh, that's going to be minus reaction 2. And let's just put reaction 1 right here, and reaction 2. And that'd be a plus reaction too. Okay, so I can simplify it down. I can even remove some of the parentheses for these first ones. All right, and so there's my Euler's method. Now here's my new CA value right here. But we all we want to plot this and just be able to see the different concentrations and uh, how they change with time. I'm just going to copy this in so I don't have to type it out. Okay, this figure, and let's just look at the uh, CA, CB, CC, and CD. Okay, you can just include those as, uh, you know, I don't need to do a subplot here. Okay, so there is my, uh, there are my concentrations right there. All right, so we calculated that with, you know, point 0.1, or po sorry, point 0.2. We could make it a little bit more accurate with point 0.1. Okay, have more time points there. Um, but let's just uh, uh, leave it like that. Um, we're going to add, for the next part, we're going to add the selectivity. Okay, we want to see how much C is produced with respect to the combined C plus D. Um, and uh, let's just add it back up here instead. Okay, we're already looping through this. I'll just do zeros. Okay. Um, and actually I'll make that ones. Okay, and then the selectivity um, as we go th through this is gonna be the concentration of C divided by the concentration of C I plus C D. Okay, and this is where we might need the subplot. And if we wanted to include it as another subplot here, I could um, let me add it down at the very bottom. Uh, subplot 2, it's a 2 by 1, so 2 rows, 1 column. 
Uh, that's the number of rows in the subplot. That's the number of columns. And that's going to be our second subplot. Okay, and then if I wanted to include that um, selectivity and then maybe make it a black line instead, and I'll put my S there. Okay, and then I could add um, a legend to that. Okay, and then let's do an X label. This is going to be time. And just rerun that. Okay, so here is my selectivity. Um, it shows, uh, you know, how much I'm favoring the production of C versus D. So, um, let's see. So, here we go. We have this, uh, we calculated the selectivity. We also plotted these. Okay, and we want to print the final selectivity. So here are all the selectivities right here. If we want to print just the very final one, we do a negative one there, and that gives us the final one. If you do negative two, that's a second to last one. Um, or if I just leave this off, I can see all of them. So I was just trying to print this very last one. And so that's a negative one there. Okay, so let's just talk about this one now this one's a little bit more of an open-ended problem uh, assuming that all of these initial conditions are fixed how can you increase the final value of the selectivity given the above reactions um, so if we want to try to maximize the selectivity of uh, you know s I know how could we uh, you know modify that and so one of the ways you could do that is just by adjusting the initial conditions. So you could come in here instead of, uh, you know, CB equals to 1, you could double that. Okay, and then you could look at the selectivity. The selectivity went down there. Okay, so let's say we have that instead, you know, 0 0.5 times that. Okay, and then the selectivity is going to stay higher. So, so in this case, you might be able to adjust the selectivity by changing some of the initial concentrations that we load into our batch. Um, and one of the nice things about having a simulation model like this, um, you know, is that you can run some of these uh, conditions and be able to see how it's going to affect the solution without having to do an experiment. Um, one of the other things that I mentioned earlier on is that uh, we could also use something like an ODINT solver to be able to solve this as well. I just want to show that to you briefly. You know, an alternate way to do this uh, solution versus Euler's method is to use an ODINT uh, integrator and where you need to define the, um, the derivatives that you're going to return. And so I'm, I've got this concentration that I'm going to feed in. Those are going to be the four concentrations. And so I'm going to do a shorthand way of, of parsing these out into my different concentrations from the C value. That's, this is kind of equivalent of, you know, CA equals C0. And then I'm going to do CB equals C1 and so on. So that's a, a long way of doing it. A short way of doing that is just including that on one line like this. And then uh, derivative 1, I might say that's going to be equal to minus k1 times uh, ca times cb. Okay, derivative 2 is going to be, uh, let me do these reaction rates again. Reaction 1 equals k1 times ca times uh, cb. Okay, and that's that's going to be equal to minus reaction one, and then <clears throat> I also want reaction two in there as well, and so that's going to be equal to uh, for reaction two K two times C B times C C. Okay, so D two is going to be equal to minus reaction one, minus reaction two. It's going to be consumed. Uh, for both of those, the derivative 3 the, for concentration C, it's going to be equal to reaction 1. I'm going to be producing C. And then minus reaction 2, I'm consuming C in that second reaction. And then there is uh, reaction 2. 
and uh, I'm going to return d1, d2, d3, and d4. And then I can uh, uh, import, uh, so from scipy integrate, I'm going to import odint. Normally I'd do this at the very top, um, you know, import all my packages at once. And uh, then I would define my initial conditions and then integrate it. Okay, so C is ODE int. And I'm going to put DC here and then give it my initial conditions, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then also put in the times where I want to uh, see the solution. So I'm going to put in T there. So this is another way to do it right here to find the solution to those differential equations. And then it um, it essentially just adjusts the step size for you to get a very accurate solution. I'm just going to need to break these um, apart now because I had in my first column, I'm going to have my uh, CA values. And then in my second column, third column, fourth column, I'm going to have CB, CC, and CD. And then I'll just take these uh, individual columns. This says take all of the rows and then the zero column there. And so if I run this, it's going to give us essentially the same solution, but a little bit more accurate than using Euler's method. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video tutorial. I showed how to set up and solve a system of four differential equations using Euler's method, but also the preferred way, which is the ODINT uh, solver. And you should get something that, um, you know, as we showed before, that looks a little bit like this. Um, and then you also want to calculate the selectivity there.